Are you ready to see all of my design secrets? Hey tribe, welcome to HGDC, HG Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and I'm 28 from the United Kingdom. This channel of mine is a bubble filled with creativity and empowerment, documenting my journey, making moments and memories. Today's vlog tribe is all about my bullet journal. This is the 2019 setup right here. 2018 is just behind me. I'm going to show you five ways that I use this as a designer and as a hobbyist with crochet, knitting and general yarn. Whew. Okay, so if you're a brand new a brand new villa, a brand new viewer, <laughs> hi, hello and welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back tribe. So there won't be any actual show and tell of crochet projects per se, but I will be, this is crochet and yarn related. Okay, first of all, just a little, just a little announcement, just a quick announcement. Um, I haven't been around very much and that's because I took some time off inadvertently um, and I just wanted to say thank you for everyone that checked in with me. I am okay, things are going well. I'm in a good place and I've got so much to show you so let's get started I am hoping that the vlogs will now become regular but we all hear the youtubers say that and then they disappear and I've become one of them right bullet journals here we go I'm going to show you through my bullet journal first so that you get an overview of what it's like then I'm going to go into the five different ways, five different ways that I use it as a designer and as a hobbyist. So first of all, my bullet journal is from WH Smiths. It's got this grey cover and it's got the blue elastic to hold it closed. And it's also got the, um, the page marker, which is also navy blue. Last year's was actually this black fake leather. And it was also from WH Smiths, so they're the same size. They are A5. Um, I find that this size is better to carry around with me and I take this pretty much everywhere I go. Um, it's a slightly softer back, so it's a bit more flexible. Um, the elastic band closure is so important because as you can see, I put things inside it. I need to be able to keep it closed and together. And it is actually squared paper. So I'll just show you a random page. Oops. I've lost my stuffing. It's actually graph or squared paper. Um, and the reason for that is I find it easier to um, create my setups. It just gives you a bit more flexibility as opposed to just lined paper. Um, so on the first page, I always put sort of a mood board inspiration. And this year's word, one little word is simplify. And so my front page is based on that entirely and to make this I just used um, scraps from my uh, paper stores that I've got um, I printed off a couple of quotes from Pininterest I used that was actually a gift tag that I recycled that was an off cut from something and then I've used the letters here I think the letters were from like the pound shop um, and to stick it all down, I use glue dots, which are from the pound shop here. You can get them from craft stores. They're just a tiny little circular dot that's sticky, and then I stick things in with it. Um, I find, because they're really cheap, and because it's you don't have to wait for them to dry, and it doesn't bubble the paper or anything, that I prefer those. And I usually have them with my um, larger journal that I write in, just so I can stick stuff in really really easy to use then 
I've set up, I've got my calendar page so that I can just quickly refer to the year. We are almost into March already, that's crazy. Then I've got my Simplify um, definition and manifesto set out there because that's the word I'm incorporating this year. Then I've got all different lists. So I'm doing 30 before I'm 30 this year. So that's on here. I'm not going to show you that. Um, I've got my Make 9, which I will get to. Um, and then I've got some designs. Now normally I set up my month. I haven't done that in this one. Um, in terms of calendar, I, I do use my phone more because I can then email invites to my work calendar. So I wasn't using the month pages in here, so I've just not written them out, but there's some that I can show you. Again, this one wasn't used. I usually set out December, um, the month. Then I've got here like a list of events and at the top I usually put my goals. But it wasn't getting used so it seemed silly to to um, spend the time writing them out. Then I've done a, diff a few different um, weekly layouts. So let me find one that doesn't have anything too revealing. I was going with a spread like this and again I didn't use it so then I swapped it to a spread like this and again I didn't really use it so each box is for a day of the week so I've decided not to do that anymore. Um, what I do do instead is if I need to do a to-do list for the day, then that goes in there, but I don't, other than my yearly overview of the months so that I can plan stuff in advance, I don't do my months or my weeks. But that's the beauty of a bullet journal. You put in it what you need and what works for you. So this is the one that I set up for 20, 19 this year. I'm not very far into it. Um, I take this everywhere. If I need to make notes, I put it in here. Sometimes I do keep notes in my phone, but I am very much um, a pen and paper kind of girl and I like to just write or doodle as it comes to me. And that's why it's brilliant for the crochet world. Um, Let's go into the five ways and I can show you some more of these page spreads. So I've written out my five ways. So number one is lists. So I make lists of projects. I make lists of um, the yarn that I've used or that I want to use. I make lists of patterns that I want to make. Um, I have done a list of my bucket list. So I'm going to have to go between the two because some is in here and some is in my new one of which I will probably transfer over. So I've got a list of my bucket list, my crochet and knitting bucket list, which I then haven't worked on. So I'm going to revamp this and put it in here. So I've got things like I want to knit with a sock blank, which I still want to do. I want to make 12 pairs of socks in one year. Which I still would like to actually do. Um, I would like to crochet a shawl, but that I don't wear shawls, so I'm not sure about that. Um, knit an item with clothing that can actually get ticked off. Uh, test knit a pattern. I test crocheted a pattern, so I could tick that off. Um, it says go to a paid for crochet class, teach a crochet class, clash, class have a sock drawer, um, make a pixel gown, try three different types of heels, um, make a, go on a yarn road trip, which I kind of did when I went to Hobbycraft. So yes, there's definitely more ways I can, um, more things I can add to this, some I can tick off and that can get transferred across to 2019 so that it's with me. Um, other lists that I make are, 
I'm not sure if they're in this one. Should have post-it noted it, but never mind. I have made lists of patterns I want to make, which I know there's only one pattern on it at the moment, so and it's the two of ones um something called the other scarf. <laughs> Metro Bias Scarf by Two of Wands, patterns to make. That is made it onto there. So lists, if you love to make lists like me, bullet journals are a great place to put them. You can tick them off when you do them. You can even put dates next to them and it will just keep you a little bit focused because in the world of Instagram, Pinterest and everything else, YouTube out there, you see so many different projects. It's hard to keep track of what you want to work on or, you know, I just find this really focuses me um, and even I know on Ravelry that you can queue projects but again I don't with me for me anyway I go on and everything I see I queue or I want to do whereas this I can really drill down into this is the next few projects that I want to work on or these are the projects that I want to turn my attention to this time sometime this year it's up to you how you work it so number one is lists Number two, I have got notes. It's a journal. I make so many notes in here. I make notes on design ideas, on tension, on um, gauge uh, for swatches. Um, I make notes of oh, so many different things. Now I'm going to show you the construction of this jumper that I've been working on and the notes that I started to make. So, can we see here, I put notes for body and I listed how I thought that I should work on it. Um, I also made notes on here, it says making notes. Ooh, can you see that? Making notes um, of how I started, how many I cast on with, I make notes on, I think I'll be in this one, I make notes on, so when I was working on my crochet leggings, I made notes on each of the rows from row one to, to row 75 and there's the last few ones. Um, I always start off really really neat and by the end of it I am scribbling, that's usually because I'm just scribbling as I go along. Um, but I've definitely found that you, if you're working on a pattern to make notes as you go along makes it so much easier, you don't have to decipher it when you're trying to make it again. Um, then I make notes on um, cast-ons, so when I made a pair of socks I cast on, I put the date, the stitch mount, the toe that I went with, what I was using. Um, I know people do use Ravelry for this, but I find that by having it all in my notebook, um, I'm more likely to update it and it reduces my screen time, because if I go on my phone to update Ravelry, I will see a pretty pattern I'd be like ooh and I'll go look at that and then I'll have to go find yarn for it and then I'll just have a quick look on Instagram to see if anyone else has made it and before you know it two hours has passed and I forgot about what I was going to write down. So it's a great way to reduce screen time when you use your bullet journal, it really is. Um, another list that I should have shown you is my Mink 9 for 2019 which I've got there and I've left that page blank because I'm going to put some inspiration pictures on there as soon as I get around to printing them. It should be, I don't know when that will be, but I know which images want to go in there so I can kind of see them there anyway. Okay, number three, sketches. I sketch out design ideas, um, I sketch out ideas of how I would measure, put things together, um, like construction notes, um, schematics, I can't even say the word. I have so many patterns in here. I'm not the most amazing at drawing, but I'm more than happy to do a quick doodle in a bullet journal. Um, and some of them are questionable, and some of them I'm pretty proud of. So, 
for example, I've been thinking about skirts that I want to make for a matching coordination set for my Make 9. So I drew out all the different skirts that I, I was interested in making and how I would, you know, here is a little bit more detail about how I would do this. Um, so it's a peplum bodycon skirt, but then there's all these different variations that I could do with it. Um, honestly, having this here is so helpful because you can then, I know that I really want to make this one, this one, and possibly that one. The others are okay, but yeah, this one definitely. Um, and so I've got all of those ideas there and I can go back at any time and work on one of them if I wanted to, because it's all there, it's all jotted down. So I would definitely recommend that you have a bullet journal that you can quickly sketch out any ideas. Um, I've got a couple more sketches in here. So that one is a jumper that I was thinking of, well, that I will make. Um, there's a couple of others, but I'm not ready to show you those right now. And there will be more in here. I know I sketched out my granny square jumper in here. Here we go. Very rudimental. Um, I also have just found another list. <laughs> I'll show you that list in a minute. So yes, I've sketched out so many designs, um, some of which I am not showing you. Others which, yeah, I'm really, um, really pleased with them. That's the, oops, sketch that I quickly did. Um, when I was designing my boho shrug cardi, that image just came to me and I had to quickly draw it out, which is hence why it's in a post-it note. And then I got home and I worked on it properly. Um, and you can see the vlog about that, but that pattern will not be released. Okay, so, sketching out. You don't have to be an amazing designer. You don't have to be amazing at illustration. You can get your ideas down just to keep you on track because it's very easy to start a project and then as you get part way through you think oh I might change this I might change that there's nothing wrong with that but if you have a clear idea before you start then you're more likely to see the idea through to completion and that's the end goal okay then I also as well as sketch my own images I stick images in um, now, as I said, for my Make 9, I've got images that I want to put in here. Um, I haven't got around to doing that. I'm not going to chastise myself. My mind works in a random way. But what I have done is I've cut out a few images from a magazine. And they are in here. Um, and it's all about pearls and embellishment and the clear bag and the bag shapes. And I'm really, really liking them at the moment. So I put those in here as a bit of inspiration. Um, and then also I'm really liking the statement sleeves. I really like different sleeve shapes. And so I put that in there. And then it's got all of these different bags, which again, I'm loving. I'm loving the clear bags. Loving the clear bags. So they're in there. Because I operate two different journals, um, I also have images that go in this journal which is on my knee. This is more like a, a dear, dear diary journal where I write out my, um, you know, what I'm feeling, day to day stuff. Um, I don't start it with dear diary but that's just so you get an idea of what goes in here. Um, I write in this every couple of days, maybe once a week just depending on what's going on. Um, and I've done this since I was at least 16, so I've got a fair few of them. And I don't know when it started, but at some point I started sticking things in, like mementos, because I'm quite sentimental. So, um, cinema ticket stubs, you know, little things like that, that you collect on when you go and do something, it would end up in my journal. And then I also started putting in things that um, I found inspiring, whether it was writing out quotes or printing them off. There's definitely a lot of them written out in here. Oh, I did to sneeze. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so 
this is a page of quotes that I've written out. So it says, may we, may we be consumed with the creator of all things rather than with things created. Collect adventures, not things. One year equals 365 possibilities. Quality, buy less, choose well, make it last. Your ambition should be to get as much out of life <laughs> start again your ambition should be to get as much life out of living as you possibly can as much enjoyment as much interest as much experience as much understanding and not to simply be what is generally called a success by Eleanor Roosevelt so that was the start of the year that I put those in um so because I keep this journal which I know not many people do there is a bit of overlap so some of my crochet inspiration is in here but if you're only going to keep your bullet journal it would all be in there which is why I'm showing you so I am obsessed with Chanel um, and now Carl, Carl Lag Lagerfield has now passed away I'm obsessed with Chanel um, it's really some of the designs are really inspiring and they are inspiring for what I some of the designs I've got in there that I don't want to show you um, it's influenced them in a few ways. So, I have printed, well, cut out the pages from a magazine, Chanel. She's got the sliders, she's got the belt, all the bling. And then this is the pages of one of the books that I want to get, the Chanel book. And um, then I've just print, uh, cut out some of the quotes from magazines. So I do this now, when I, I do get a lot of magazines, I love looking through Cosmopolitan and whatever else, Company, Vogue, anything like that. And I used to keep stacks and stacks and stacks of them, but what I'm doing now, because less is more, I'm just cutting out. So I get the magazine, I read it, I devour it, and I come home and I rip out all the pages I want to keep. And then I give myself 10 minutes and I just stick it all in whichever journals. So I worked on both at the same time, but I decided to put the bigger Chanel pages in here. And again, I just cut out Strong and the Chanel jewellery page because that's what I'm all about right now. Um, and then I can't, I don't know how I'm going to show you this without flashing my soul. Let's block out the writing. <laughs> But then I've put this in there as well. Take the past less travel. So, my tip for you, number four way of using your bullet journal, is to print or print quotes, um, cut them out of magazines, find what inspires you, and put it in the pages because inspiration is key so I am definitely going to continue to do that I've got a few more magazines down there I'm going to take out the pages at some point and just stick them in and get rid of so that I can reduce what's going on down there um, and I find it really inspiring because when I'm flicking through to get to a page just to quickly see them to see the clear bags, I'm loving the clear bags and all the pearl detailing I really want to incorporate that into some of my designs yes um, I've stuck this in just because I love the detailing on it why not I had to stick this in and um, it's a chunky like a chunky knit cashmere cardigan by Louisa Spagnoli probably butchered that sorry um the cardigan do you know how much that cardigan costs it's the sole reason why I stuck it in so that green cardigan there I stuck it in because that lady charged 2225 pounds for the cardigan and I thought I ever get to charge that for one-off pieces, I'll be like I'll be made in life. So I've put that in there as inspiration. I don't know if you're able to see the ridiculous price. That's cray. Dream big, guys. Dream big. So I put all that in there. I've also sketched out. 
I'm really big on visual visualization and I've sketched out some of the details of the next few stages of my of my journey with HDDC. I'm not ready to show you that right now, but you can do that in your bullet journal as well. Sketch out what you want to see um, come forward, what you want to manifest. Make sure that you're putting in um, things that keep you inspired. So here, stay creative, stay cared up, stay free. Oh, my hay fever started. Yes, it's February and it started. I just want to scratch my face off. Um, then, I think I showed you three. I've shown you this, notes, and the sketches and designs, plus the images that I put in there as inspiration. So number four is the how-tos, is the pages that I put in there because um, they're like reference pages, so pages that I would refer to, so how to kitchen a stitch. Um, it's something that I know how to do, but because I don't use it often, I need to refer back to it. So rather than going back to a YouTube video, which are really, really helpful, I just need a note of what I'm doing to jog my own memory. Um, I also have things like US Stitches to UK, um, I can pretty much interchange but sometimes I just need to double check so I've got that um, then other reference things such as I've got how to construct a garment like how to put a jumper together although I know how to I just like to look at the sketch that I've drawn out just to remind myself Again, this is another way that I reduce screen time because everything I need is just all here in one little space. So I've got seaming a jumper, I've got my how to there, I've got kitchen and a toe. Um, it's really useful just to have everything all in one place so no matter where I go. I have all the information I need with me just to crack on. Sometimes, if I am working on something Kitchener or toe, I can have this in front of me to remind me, but then I will um, be able to use my phone or whatnot to watch something, listen to something. Um, so I am very much a paper person, and I know some of you out there are as well. And this works really, really well, just to have a little note to refer back to. Um, and I'm sure that I will add more and more of them as I go along but because we're only in the first few months of 2019 I don't have a lot in here yet um, part of me thinks that I will probably fill this before the end of the year anyway but we shall see so that's number four reference pages how to's number five is quite possibly my favorite element is the planning I use my bullet journal to plan a lot. Now, you can put in your monthly, your weekly spreads, whatever works for you. I tend to just do my, um, so I will sit on a, it used to be Sunday, it's now a Wednesday. Um, what day, work on a day that suits you and your schedule. But I pick Wednesdays and I work out what I'm going to work on. So I sit and plan out what it is that needs my attention for that week and what I need to work on. So what projects I want to get finished, what stages I need to work on next. Um, I work out if there's anything that I need to research or I need to look into or I need to learn. And then I also plan out the content for social media, Patreon and my YouTube. I use this to plan all of my social media content um, and I just find it really useful just to have a bit of an overview of what I intend to do for that week. So I write out my day, so my planning day, my planning morning on the Wednesday, I will write out HGDC to do, home to do and life admin and then I will so under HDDC I've got um, Ravelry messages, sew my waistbands, you know, take my social media photos. Um, 
one of them in here I've got my bullet journal pictures so I've got till next Wednesday to do that guys I will put all of that in here and then I'll work through them and tick them off and then I know where I am I know what I need to work on um, it helps me stay focused it helps me stay on track with what I'm trying to do um, and sometimes you can wake up and you think I don't know what to work on first and it's really good just to jot down here everything that you feel that you need to work on and then pick out like All right, I'm going to work on one two three four five and in that order um, I also plan out so if I if I want to make something for somebody's birthday I will look at my calendar and I'll think right their birthday is in September so I need to start it in May I never would give myself that long um, and this is how much I need to do per week or I would say right I want to get this jumper finished by this time next week so I need to do 20 rows per day or something so that I can join it up on the last day like I work like that I like my my goals and my deadlines people so I would definitely recommend that you even on a day where you've got you know you've you've got a whole day to yourself where you can sit and crochet or you can dedicate it to um, yarn or whatever you want to do I would sit and just jot down all the things that you think that you'd like to do and write them down so you don't forget anything you don't overlook anything and so that you make the best use of your time so purple hair everywhere I hope that's helpful um, and that you've enjoyed seeing the spreads in my bullet journal the other thing that I will say is when it comes to inspiration I do have a swatch in here at the moment yes I do and that I'm not going to show you the pattern that I've sketched out to go with it but let's just say I'm really excited about this project what do you think I love, love, love the granny square and so I am just going to use the granny squares for everything. So I'm not ready to work on this project yet. I've swatched, um, I've drawn bits of it out. So I'm going to finish my plan and then I will dedicate myself to this once the current project I'm working on is done because I have decided that I'm just going to solely focus on one project till it's complete. Mm -hmm. I know where's Heather and what have you done to her so I had I swatched this the other day because I was so excited but that's the great thing about the bullet journal is I swatched which look at the colors oh my goodness look at the colors I'm loving my pink and then I've put some notes in here and then that's it I'm rocking around with it in my bullet journal because I'm finding it hugely, hugely inspiring and motivating. You know when you're working through a project and you think, it's never going to be finished, it's taken forever, I don't want to do this anymore, which I do with every project by the way. When that excitement, like the initial excitement rubs off, I'm like, I don't want to do it, I'm bored. Um, and so the way that i found to combat that is knowing that as soon as that project is done, I can go on to this one and so that's just in there enticing me and just encouraging me to carry on all my design secrets are in here and I've just shown you the swatch Ooh. for my next project you are welcome so guys bullet journals lists notes sketches designs inspiration references or how to and planning great ways you can use your bullet journal as a crocheter or a knitter now i hope you've enjoyed this vlog um please comment below what ways you use your bullet journals so that i can get some ideas and inspiration from you and i will see you all again soon two weeks time on sunday um and i am now off to carry on working so that I can get on with this swatch because you guys I love it and doesn't it just tie in look at that's my mood board for the year and look at the colours it just needs a bit of metallic in there doesn't it 
yes so with that I'm going to rush off now so that I can get some more crochet done I hope you have a lovely lovely day and you have lots of happy time making moments and memories see you soon guys <laughs>